Hey y'all, I'm Patrick Haggerty with ROI Training, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to find log entries using Google Cloud's Logs Explorer. Now, if you're going to be doing some logging in Google Cloud, you probably want to take a look at some of the logging documentation first, if you're not very familiar with it. Um, I have a page of useful links I've been putting together for Google Cloud for a while now. Um, you can find this page over at tinyurl.com slash ROI dash GCP dash links. In this file, I have a pretty big section on Operation Suite. Uh, including a subsection on logging. It's got a link to the logging documentation homepage, some good logging concepts, and kind of third from the top, you'll see a link to a page all about the Logs Explorer. The Logs Explorer is going to be our primary tool we use when we are working with logging. So you want more information, go check that out. Um, at the top of my operations suite, you see a link to a GitHub repo. I created a basic Node.js application to allow me to do some Operation Suite testing. You can find that right there. Um, for the sake of this video, I've spun up a temporary project over here. In this project, I've created a Kubernetes cluster. My sample application can run in Kubernetes. It can run in uh, App Engine, or it can run in Cloud Run, right? So I've gone ahead and I've deployed it to Kubernetes. Um, I have a basic web-based JavaScript application. It's using the Express web server. Um, nice lightweight web server. Uh, inside my application, I went ahead and loaded up one of the logging APIs that you find in the JavaScript world. Google, as a best practice, recommends when you do logging, you just log to standard out, but sometimes using a logging API is nice. So I loaded up a logging API, and I just have a bunch of paths you can visit on this application. You go to the home page, and it returns to you hello world, but it also logs a message to standard out. That's Google's recommended best practice, right? I also have a slash log here, which actually uses my Winston logger and logs out that way, right? Just to allow me to see that, okay? Um, I went ahead and deployed this to Kubernetes. Um, in Kubernetes, I create a deployment, I create a service. If I come out here and I go look at what I have, I have three copies of my logging application running. I also, I have one copy of a load balancer. There's the external IP address of my application right there. If I go visit that, there's that hello world. It says hello world, but it also logs some stuff behind the scenes. I'm gonna refresh that a few times, right? Then I'm also going to go to go. I'm also going to go ahead and let's go to that same page again. Let's go to the slash log. You might remember that's the one that's using Winston, right? So there's some log messages coming from that. Okay. Um, one more path. I'll go ahead and visit. I also have a path which will blow up and throw an exception, and uh, I can go visit that. So uh, slash error, there we go. So let me go ahead and go to slash error and broken, come back later, generate a few errors. All of that generated log messages. Okay, so I wanna go find some log messages out there. Well, again, the logs explore about halfway down here through my uh, you know, main navigation menu, you see your logging subsection, the Logs Explorer is at the top of that. My Logs Explorer is right there, and it will allow me to go out and generate logs. Now, or query logs, right. Now, if you think about it, querying logs, if you had just one or two or five logs, that would not be a huge deal, right? The challenge, however, is this kind of thing you tend to have maybe tens or hundreds or thousands or millions of log messages that are generated. How do you find the ones you want, right? How do you find the ones you want? Well, using the Logs Explorer, my first advice to you would be time scoping, right? When did the log message occur? Do you see up here, we have a 
last hour is the default. If I click on that, it will allow me to set a time range. Okay. Notice that these are actually all editable. Okay. So right now, by default, it's showing me the last hour. But if I wanted to, you see like this one says 15 minutes ago. Okay. So show me the last 15 minutes. Do you see that's actually editable, however? If I wanted to see you know, the last 20 minutes or the last 10 minutes, whatever, I can actually do that. Okay. So if you change a time there and you hit apply, you see it'll actually show you, okay, now it's zoomed in and it's showing me just what's happened in, say, the last 10 minutes. Right. Still, though, looking at the last 10 minutes, I, I tend to have a lot of logs that show up. In this case, it's showing me, you know, I have, you know, maybe several thousand log messages that have happened in the last 10 minutes. I have a histogram showing me when log messages occurred. And if you're looking for like a huge spike somewhere, right, you could actually click on it and jump to that spike. Down the left hand side, I have log fields. These are actually filters. Okay, these are filters. Um, reported errors. Okay, how about reported errors? Oh, do you see if I click on reported errors? Do you see what it does is it just does a filter for me. The filter is being applied. I could clear it if I want to. But you see, you remember I showed you the last visit I did is when I went to slash error, which I told you was blown up with an error. Ah, so that allowed me to jump right to those errors, right? Applying a filter with the logs field, all it's really doing when you apply or clear, the, uh, clear a filter is it's changing the query up here. What you see in your logs explore is directly related to that query box right there. So the question is, how do you build a query? Right? Well, you can get really fancy if you want. If you want to, go to the log section of my uh, links file, and I have a whole kind of little subsection in here on log queries, right? Um, starting with, you know, that logging query language reference right there, you can go read all about exactly how do you put logs together if you really want to. Sophisticated logs, you're going to need that. If it's more basic, though, you really don't have to put a fancy query together. One other nice thing in this file here is they have a subsection on finding entries quickly, right? Finding entries quickly. As your time window gets bigger, the queries tend to get a little more challenging because there's so much data to shift through, right? Now, my advice to you would be, what do you know about what you're looking for, right? What do you know about what you're looking for? Um, let's say I want to find the entries where I came to my homepage, okay? Well, the entries where I came to my homepage all contained some text, right? If you know some text that the entry contains, hey, you could just query that text, right? I'm going to copy that subsection of text out here. I'm just going to come into my query box. I'm going to do an open quote. And I'm going to query that exact text right there, run the query, there you go. Now I find that, found the queries that I'm interested in. Once you find one entry that you're interested in, you can actually examine it more closely for details. If I click on one of these entries, by the way, the things that are being returned are technically called log entries. If you go check out that link right there, that will tell you more than you wanted to know about those individual log entries, right? If I expand the nested fields inside that log entries and I hit the button to allow the log entry to kind of fill the page, I can see more useful information, right? I can see uh, I, there's my text. It's in a payload, right? I can see it's coming from a resource Kubernetes container. Okay. So do you want to see... Log entries that are just related to Kubernetes containers, maybe? Um, notice here I have a label, which is the container name. Oh, okay. So notice when you examine these a little more closely, you see a lot of details of where this information is coming in. Like down here, do you notice that if I'm logging the standard out, that all shows up in a project standard out logs file under my project name. See that Quick Labs GCP thing? That's my project name in this example. If you want to, any of these values that you see here, you could use them to kind of tweak your filter, right? To tweak your query. Let me show you an example here. Um, 
These are all log entries for the container name, hello login container. If I click on that, do you see where it says show matching entries or hide matching entries? If you know there's things you want to hide or things you want to show, you can choose to show that. If, if I show matching entries, you see it edits my query. Okay, now let me modify this a little bit. Let me get rid of my starter query that kind of got me that initial space. And let me just see all the logs for hello logging container. Let me run that query. Aha. Okay, so now do you see, for example, I see all of my logs that are coming out from my hello world page. I'm also seeing all the logs that are coming out of, let's say, my error page call, right? Along with some other logs that are coming out of my container telling me my profiler is not configured correctly. That's actually a security problem, the way I have my cluster built. So again, if you can find a single entry, then a lot of times that single entry can lead you to a lot more information that you might be looking for. Um, when I started by putting a query in quotes, that's a really slow query. Remember I talked a second ago about you can come in here and find logs quickly. Querying by a chunk of text is very slow. So if you're querying by a chunk of text, restrict it down to a time range, right? And I, I tell you one trick, besides things like last 10 minutes, do you see, I, I love this one right here, jump to time, okay? So do you see jump to time? If, if something happened weird yesterday morning at 9 a.m., I could use that jump to time to jump my logs to a window, you know, plus or minus an hour around that time and just look at that time, right? So try to be... Uh, as specific with your times as possible using your time range up here. I, I, I prefer that you can, in theory, put the time range in the query. That might be nice if you want to save the query for later or something. But in general, when I'm looking, using the uh, time specification up here works a lot better, right? Um, one last thing I want to talk a little bit about is these dropdowns you see up here. Okay. So when you're trying to find your queries, your dropdowns are good if you kind of know what you're looking for, right? So if I knew it was the standard out log before I ever started, okay, because I've done this before maybe, do you notice that I could actually find my standard out log very easily because it's actually one of the logs that are listed? Did you notice what I did? I dropped this down, I found the standard out log, I ticked the checkbox, and then I hit add. Don't forget that add. Checking the checkbox isn't enough. You gotta make sure it gets in the query, and then you can run that query. There you go. Now, let me unmaximize this. Whenever you then do a query, then you can also look at your log fields for more fine tuning. All right, good. So a little information about finding your logs. What do you know? Do you know a piece of text? Do you know it's part of a particular resource? Resources can be tricky though. Kubernetes is a good example. Is it a cluster? Is, is it a, a cluster log or a node log? Or a, you know, so sometimes your resources can be a little tricky. Do you know a log name? Okay. And as you build your query up, again, you're getting more specific, more specific. If you find one entry, use the trick I showed you where you expand, you find some sub value, you click on the sub value and you show or hide matching entries. Okay, that is very similar to using your logs field over here. These are easy filters you can apply. So start with what you know. Work from there until you can find an entry, expand it until you find the details that will help you find similar entries. And pretty soon, you're using the Logs Explorer to find exactly what you want. Good deal. I'm Patrick Haggerty from ROI Training. I hope you've enjoyed this video.